are live. <laughs> I thought you were going to sing something. No, no. I was, I was whistling, waiting for the live thing to start. What is going on, Minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And with me is my brother from another mother, mm. my co-host, Roberto, SS4 Rob, right? What's up? What's Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 4 Rob. Now you made up that name when you were like, Dragon Ball GT is the shit. It's yep. the greatest thing ever. And yep. now you're like, man, I wish I man. was Super Saiyan God Rob. Yeah, it should have been SS4 GDLJ <laughs> or whatever bull crap they're coming up with. Right. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we're going to do our live hauls. Uh, we missed a couple of months because the summer got busy. Rob was traveling too. Japan, Japan. So he brought some stuff back from Japan for me and himself. Um, mostly myself, but mostly yeah, himself. Yeah. That selfish bastard. And <laughs> we're also gonna be talking about some Switch news because I'm excited to know what's going on, Kenny and Pablo Vogue. Um, I'm excited to know your thoughts on the big Switch announcements. Okay. I was I was hoping we could play the guessing game tonight with the Switch character. But oh, yeah. unfortunately, they just announced it, which was the coolest announcement I think so far. Yeah, by far. A, yeah spoilers. As an SNK fan, I was watching this thing and screaming the whole time. So, mm. oh, there's someone's hand. Hello, someone's hand. Come here. You gonna go take? Give me a kiss. And go to bed. I love you. Hey, baby. Okay. Guess what she was playing? Pokemon. No, Lydia. What's the name of the game? Men of Medan. Is that right? Men. Yeah. Of... She, yeah. She really. <laughs> Well, that was my brother. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that child is way ahead of her time. She's 10 years old. All right. So let's talk about some hauls. Um, why don't you go first and we'll go back and forth between us and I'll I'll keep an eye on the chat as people join us. Because okay. thank you. Thank you for joining us at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you're catching this live, you're awesome. And if you're not catching it live, you're just as awesome. You're still awesome. You're, you're still, still awesome. just as awesome. Okay. All right, Rob. So, Why don't you go ahead and do your thing? Okay, so I'm going to do, and I apologize. Normally, I am not this kind of guy. I'm not he really kind is. of guy. No, he totally is. <laughs> Shut up. But I am going to show off something I'm really excited and proud of. As has been mentioned on the floor, before, I'm a producer for the game Friday the 13th. And while I was in Japan uh, for the Switch... So while I was in Japan, I had an opportunity to do some interviews, and I did an interview with Nintendo Dream Magazine, which was amazing because I've been—I actually have a couple old issues of Nintendo Dream Magazine over there, so that was really cool. And then I also got the chance to do an interview with Weekly Famitsu. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, so so I mean, like, yes, the fact that you know what that is—that's a huge thing. So I did an interview. You didn't get to see my expression. I was like, "Whoa!" Oh, there, th thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> So I did this. There it is. There it is. So I did an interview with Weekly Famitsu, and the issue came out on August 29th, which is the day that Friday 13th for the for the Nintendo Switch was released. So that was great timing, great, fantastic. And our partner is Natsume Atari. They're awesome. So today, guess what came in straight from Japan is the latest issue of Weekly Famitsu with Astro Chain on the cover. Where's your cover? Like, where's your face? Why is your face hold not on the cover? Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's true. Why is it not on the cover? That's disrespect. Oh, and and page like three. Here's an advertisement for the game. Friday Friday thirteenth. Okay. Which is really cool. There it is in Famitsu, right? Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, it's pretty dope. So then we thumb through here. I don't know if y'all can see this. Thumb through here. There's some interviews of some cool Japanese developers. Hold on. There's the review system. Just Monster Hunter. <laughs> you know, you would you should have bookmarked it. I don't know if you no, know what that all is. Right, here's, okay, this is neat. So here's Astro Chain, and here is an uh, interview with Kamiya. Okay. Uh, here we go. Here we go. So look, see, those are the man himself, the people. That's awesome. And right after mm -hmm. them. None of those guys are you. None of those guys Right are after you. them is. Look, look at them, Bogan. Is Pinball. For pinball. India. Awesome. And then way to hey, hype it up. Oh my god, there I am. Let's let's put a close up. <laughs> Big freaking nerd. Look at you. That's amazing. Oh, I'm in. You you are in a Famitsu magazine. I'm actually literally in Famitsu do magazine. Do you do you understand what that 
what that says. Do you know if it says this big fucking nerd from America? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there is a uh, PDF of this that I also have too. And I translated it and it did not help. I think I think they recorded the things that I said. I hope that's what they recorded. So <laughs> <laughs> you think they were not talking about you at all? <laughs> I don't think so. Because the guy who's doing the translation is a really good guy. So I'm hoping that he represented things correctly. So I'm sure. And in fact, there's no I think. I'm sure, but it's really cool to be in Famitsu. Like that's a that's a life comps right there. So I, I hate to, I hate to go through that like on the air, but I thought that was cool. And no, dude, that is completely cool. So this this right here, we're gonna do a live unboxing. This is we're gonna do a live I unboxing. I didn't label it as that, but okay. This is how Rob Fox rolls. This is how, this is how Rob unboxes. Inside we have Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> on Nintendo Switch, and I bought this with my own hard-earned money. So, like, you work for Gun Studio, like you know that, right? Like, it's, that's not the point. The point okay. is, I want to go to a store and buy the thing that we've been working on for months and months and months and months. The thing when I'm in Japan, I'm on a train and I'm like submitting stuff to Nintendo as I'm on a train to go to a Japanese castle. Like, that's how serious <laughs> I was about putting this thing together, and here it is. And I had to support myself. I guess I'm kind of like not supporting myself. Again, I had to take money to give us money. Anyway, there's a live unboxing. There you go. Friday 13th on Nintendo Switch. So there you go. That's my, that's how I like to start. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. So I'm very humble and honored. Go ahead. Your turn. <laughs> is, is it my turn? Yes, your turn. Okay. No, I, I like, uh, I like going back and forth between us and, you, you, I can still see you, by the way. Or okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. I cannot see you. I don't okay. know what you're doing. Uh, so the very first thing I'm gonna uh, do is give a shout out to my buddy Kyle. He sent me a couple of games, uh, a couple of extra games he had. He has uh, sent me this Fire Emblem Warrior Special Edition, which I did not own. Uh, if you oh, know yeah. anything about these, these are like the Dynasty Warriors kind of games, right? which is pretty cool. This is the special edition. So it comes with limited edition stuff, like a little art book and things like that. And then he also sent me to finish out my, yes, right here, Sikyo Saikyo Volume 3. This is the collection Volume 3, available only in Japan or Play Asia, if you will. Mm -hmm. But absolutely awesome. Completely awesome. I'm... I have already beaten three of the games. I beat Zero Gunner 2, uh, and then I beat Strikers 1945. Uh, Soul uh, Divide? What is the other game in here? Oh, uh, Gunba Gunbarachi. Gunbarachi. Which, which is the... was That was the Dreamcast game, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. So that is what he got me. What about you, Robert? What, what else off. did you get? Shouts out to Kyle. Um... He is a good dude. He is well, a good dude. Let's do a Japanese game. So you're talking about games from Japan. Uh, I, I do. was there. I believe it or not, I didn't really pick up that many. You picked me up a few. I did. I did pick up a few games. Uh, so let's see. I picked up for myself. Yeah, you for already yourself, have it. <laughs> the Capcom Beat'em Up Bundle, which we've shown on the, the show before. And yes, I also sir. picked up this which you've also encouraged me to get this too. This is Blade Arcus Rebellion. <laughs> and the only reason we got that is because them titties. And dead ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's the old, I have That's no it. idea what that game is. I, I think it's it a, is. Is it a shooter. I can't remember. No, it's a fighter. It's a, it's a, fighter. It, it's oh, a sexy, sexy fighter. Sexy, sexy so fighter. Sexy. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, sexy. Yeah. It's pretty dope. pretty dope. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. And I also, the, and we'll talk about this on a later episode. But I picked up some. Uh, you know, you say that, and then we don't have later episodes. Just sure. of course, we're gonna have later episodes, dude. <laughs> just throw on that. <laughs> uh, so mainly, that was the main thing that I focused on with Japan was uh, a couple of Japanese games, which was what you saw behind me in the Capcom beat 'em up, and mm -hmm. some stuff for you and your wife. I wanted to make sure that you all got some cool games, and I also picked up some retro games. I should have grabbed them, uh, but uh, it is Super Mario Brothers for the Famicom. Like I, I can go get that a commercial break or something. We have commercial breaks now. <laughs> we, we don't have that many sponsors. Actually, this episode is not sponsored by anybody. Oh, it's not. Oh, okay. It's just you and I 
chilling here. Chillin'. So, yeah, once now, you go next, I'll go find those games. How about that? <laughs> done. Okay. So, I will go next. I picked up a few things. Actually, I'll talk about some of the Japanese things. So, okay. let me zoom in on me. My wife is a huge fan of this ridiculous franchise, Final Fantasy X and X-2. Or, sorry, the glare, the glare. There we go. So much so that she bought it on the Switch. And I do have a question for you, Rob, here in a few. Um, now, she likes, she loves this game. Loves it, right? Absolutely loves it. And But she has played it through <laughs> the original PlayStation 2, the uh, PlayStation 3 remake, the PlayStation 4 remake, and now this. She grew tired of it because she's gone through, like, she's got a tattoo, you know, on her neck, like, the Titus symbol, right? She got tired of uh, the English version. So, while Rob was in Japan, <laughs> she asked Rob to pick up the ridiculous same thing except with the Japanese. <laughs> and, well, although it does it is, it is, does have a physical cart, right? Yep. Which, I don't know why they weren't able to do that in America because X2 was... Download only. I can answer this question. Would you let me to answer the question on why? Yeah, man. Here is the official answer on why you got both games on a card in Japan and not in America. <clears throat> Money. <laughs> the short version is you can, and I know this now, you can order Switch game cards of various sizes, 4 gigs, 8 gigs, 16 gigs, 32 gigs, right? It is far cheaper to order a smaller card and then just let the person download the rest. So a game like Final Fantasy, everyone in Japan is going to buy it. So they're like, eh, we'll sure. Or people will pay the money. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. game, as you know, you saw how much it cost. It was not inexpensive to get that Final Fantasy collection, even though it came out a while back. Mm -hmm. Because you're paying for the bigger, more... And I don't know if it's the 16-gig card or the 32-gig card. I don't, I don't know what's in it. But because it's the bigger game, they order the bigger card, they fit everything in it. That's why. Ah, uh, I got gotcha. you. Well, regardless, that really sucked that they were able to do that. <laughs> and for that very same reason, I asked my friend Rob, while he was in Japan, to pick me up a couple of games for myself. Because I like physical. He got me Mega Man, I'm sorry, Rockman X Collection, Volumes 1 and 2. Now, there is a one kind of bundled deal, too, of Rock, Rockman X collection in one cartridge, I want to say, or yeah, at so, least in one case. Oh so yeah. Uh, so I go up to, this is really fun. So I go to the Yodobashi camera gamer store okay. and I see our Friday the 13th game for presale, which that was super awesome to see that there. And then I saw these Rockman games. I was like, okay, I want to knock this out in one shot. Well, I go up to the front and I have exactly what you're talking about. Rockman X one and two bundle. Right, mm -hmm. I go up to the front, and the dude stops me. He's like, mm. he basically says, you have to download the second Rockman. I was like, well, I don't want to do that, because that defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do in the first place, was get the physical wait a, minute, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Even in Japan, you have to download it? Yes. If you get the bundle box, because that's what I walked up there with first. I rock, walked up there with Rockman, like Rockman 1 and 2 bundle, and Rockman X 1 and 2 bundle. They had them both in stock. So walk up to them with the thing, and they're like, mm, no, you got to download the second one for the Rockman X2 bundle. I was like, uh-uh. Ah, yeah. mm, uh, that's what, maybe that's all that they had in stock, but the bundle that they had, the, the X2 part was not physical, which is why you got the X1 in a box and the X2 in a box separately. Now, Man. same thing with Rockman. They only had, they didn't have in stock, and I went to a couple other places to see if I could find it. They had the bundle of Rockman Collection 1 and 2, and again, the second one was a download, but they did not have Rockman Volume 1 and Rockman Volume 2 separate, which is why you didn't get those, because they aren't there. <laughs> so there you go. There's your backstory on what happened there. That might be the worst origin story I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> Omar, why? Uh, here's a good question: Why the Japanese versions aren't those released in English as well? That uh, for that very same reason, I like physical. So in America, the Mega Man X collection, the bundle collection of X volumes one and two, only volume one is available as a cartridge, whereas volume two you get a little bit, you get a slip that's like, "Hey, download your game here." Fuck that noise! <laughs> I, I don't play that rule. 
like I know everybody loves digital and it's wonderful. Even my my wife and I had a big argument about this actually. So she wants Final Fantasy VIII on the Switch. Yes. So she's she already bought it. So you can tell who won that argument, right? The di- the digital copy. And I said, baby, why don't you wait on the physical? You know, because digital's kind of lame. And she's like, well, I want to play it now. I said, okay. Well, actually, it was more like, no, you don't understand. Like, physical is where it's at. Cause, I mean, you would you would be the same way if your wife was like, Rob, I'm downloading the digital copy of uh, Final Fantasy X or Final Fantasy VIII, the remastered edition. Yeah, and I would be like, no, we're not going to do that. We're and she's like, because- okay, bye. Here's your because- shit. <laughs> <laughs> because, in fact, what Melanie is going through right now is what I have – Final Fantasy VIII digitally is in my wish list, but I can't bring myself to buy it. If it goes on sale for like five bucks, seven bucks, maybe I'll, I'll go ahead and get it. But like, is, is there going to be a physical release of that game? I've not heard. I've not heard. It maybe, but I mean, it's Square, so maybe eventually, or maybe in Japan, but I have not heard anything about a physical release of Final Fantasy VIII on the Switch. So it might just, it, it just might be a thing that sits on my wish list for a long time. I don't know. And here, and I think this is where things like. Um... Uh, limited run game steps in, right? Hey, we like doing physical games, and you know, limited run games, they can step in. And the same thing with uh, Grandia, Grandia the yeah. HD collection. Like, I would love physical versions of that, but there are none. It's all digital right now. So I'm holding out, hoping either. Uh, I'm sorry. What is the Play Asia exclusive? It is. Uh, they they do physical games too, kind of like limited run games, but Special they're actually reserve? Special reserve games, or is it? There's a few of these. <sighs> They're strictly limited games, special reserve games, limited run games. Asia, what... some, a- Asia something. It's like Play Asia's version of okay. limited run games. And they're wonderful because they come with box sets and, and art books and oh, things yeah, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You showed a few. And, I, and I've shown show. some. Yeah, that yeah. Kyle has sent me. Right. So, like I said, it, I like physical. And Sorry, that's a whole different topic, which we should do one day. Now, Rob, tuturno. what else did you get? All right. All right. So, from Japan. Um, so... I also mentioned that I got a chance to go to Nintendo itself, uh, the Nintendo building. Now, 15 years ago, the first time we went to Japan, a bunch of us got in like a cab and said, take me to the Nintendo building. And we get there, We j- this is in Kyoto, and we jump out, and we're like, oh my god, Nintendo! And we took selfies, and then the security guard shot at us, and then we ran away. It was None fantastic. of that happened. None of that happened. <laughs> Most of that happened. And 80, 90% of what I just said is exactly what happened. But this time, I actually had a meeting. So instead of like, you know, me getting shot at, I was like, I have an appointment. Like, I should must. And like, oh, here you go. Come on in. So it was really cool. The Nintendo building itself is okay. You have to think Nintendo, uh, me being a Japanese fanboy, first video game system was Nintendo, which is sitting right there. I'm actually in Nintendo headquarters where they make Mario and Zelda and Switches and, and Game Boys and 3DSs and like it's all done. Donkey all, Kong. All of that. Is, oh, I hate to break your heart. All of that is made in China or Mexico. But carry on. Shut up. So <laughs> I'm in the building, and like you would think, it would be like what, like Mario music playing in the background. You open doors, you hear like whatever special effects. No, it is a stark white, clean building, and on the side there's pictures of like flowers, and that's it. And there's three beautiful women who greeted us, and they took us to our conference room. We did the thing, and again, there's no like you wouldn't have any, no idea whatsoever. This was a Nintendo building. It was just a completely clean, white, stark business building. But <laughs> it was Nintendo, <laughs> and it was surreal. So all, it was the picture, awesome. all the pictures you would have taken, like no one would have believed oh, you. No, there there's, well, a no photography anywhere. Like oh, I couldn't even see it. Well, anywhere. it's that way in Japan in general. Yeah, like everywhere I went. There's a lot of stores that I was taking pictures. They're like, mm, no photos. Like, oh, okay, my bad. This is after I've taken like 100,000 photos. So. And you were like, I don't understand Japanese. What kind of sin? Come to say. <laughs> so, so just in case, just in case I ran into Sigur Miyamoto san, just in case, because I Again. didn't like I'm, where he works, right? Like, he could just be walking out and saying, Sayonara, buds. And he's so, how by. many times did you go use the bathroom? Uh, yeah, so excuse me. Bathroom. I have to excuse myself. He did bring us tea in our business room. It was awesome. Okay. So, so just in case Miyamoto walked by, I bought and brought two games. Oh, God. <laughs> these were, the reason I got these is because they were super cheap. Okay. Devil World, which never came out in America, and it's a not that great a game, but it's fine. 
which is uh, the devil's doing. St- I don't know. I really don't know what it's about. And Super Mario Brothers. I know that one. You know this one. This is just, and I'm. You know, it's kind of funny. The reason I got this is because it was just inexpensive. It was like the equivalent of five bucks or something. But mainly, I just wanted something that Miyamoto worked on that if. If he walked by, he could just sign it and be done. Now, I have, as you know, I have a signed Zelda, but it would be cool to see. Now, of course, I did not see Mario, or you would have seen me on the Twitters and the Instagrams and all kinds of going, oh, my God, let me tell you this story. That didn't happen. But it was still cool to, like, you know, add to the Famicom collection. So, Absolutely. Go ahead. Your turn. Is it already? Well, I, can, well, I can go on. I no, no, most... no. Go on. What else did you get? Okay. Omar, I sent you a link the other day on why Hispanics love King of Fighters. We do love Hispanic. We do love King of Fighters. And I speak for the entire Hispanic population. But what's the best King of Fighters? 96. 96. Can we talk? Can we please talk about how badass that intro was for the reveal of Smash Brothers? You want to talk about that now? Okay, okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, 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 okay. So, so. You and I are big fans of Smash Brothers. You're not big fans of Smash Brothers, right? Absolutely. And, You're and, about to witness two big dorks about to have a nerd gasm. Oh my god! So I was leaving work, leaving Ooh. work. I have the Nintendo Direct in like my phone, and I'm sitting in my car, and they're like, and I'm, I'm in the parking lot. I haven't started driving yet, and they're like, new Smash dude. And there have been rumors that it was going to be an SNK person, and half the internet was like, it's going to be like. Katie or someone from Metal Slug, which would have been really cool, right? Well, okay, okay, okay. So before we 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 we, we knew we sort of knew it was leaked that it was going to be an SNK character. Yeah. So the thoughts that came through my head, Sledge is incorrect. Sledge, yeah, is Sledge, K-O-S-9-8. you are you're booted. Sorry, right, off Sorry. the show. I'm Sorry. just kidding, man. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't do that. So the characters that I thought right off the bat, I was like Terry Bogard. That was my first guess. Uh, Hamaru from uh, Samurai Showdown, or uh, Genjuro, one of those two from Samurai Showdown. And then I was like, oh, man. Uh, this is a great question, Joe. How dare you call us out in the middle of uh, me talking about this wonderful... <laughs> <laughs> we, actually, we actually are doing a panel episode about that, funny enough. <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, Sundoku or whatever it's called. So anyway, or uh, the li- <laughs> w- what is his name? The little dude in Metal Slug. Not the tank, but the little guy. Uh, Io. He was, he was in SNK yeah. versus Capcom. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. That guy. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, it's got to be one of those three. It's representation of SNK, right? So I thought it was going to be Kyo, because I mean, I thought that too. I thought that too. King, but King, King, King of Fighters or Haomaru. Yep, Haomaru mm-hmm. or Ryo from Art of Fighting. And then my fourth pick would have been someone from the Metal Slug, like Katie from Metal Slug. I thought it'd be her. I was positive it's going to be her. Okay, so those so, are our votes. So the intro, or when it's revealed, right? You see Kyo or Rio from Art of Fighting, and I was like, "No!" <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he misses, and I'm like, "Yes!" <laughs> and so, then they show Kyo coming through, and he was like, Shh, yeah. "And he missed." And Iori, Iori, Iori. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I, I was losing. I was like, "Who's left?" <laughs> Terry Bogart, and I'm like, "Oh, I do." No, no, I hold on. Like, no. You, then it was like you know it went through some. Oh of the yeah, it, went it played my, like and uh, as all these are coming up, it played music. It played music from King of Fighters '96, by the way. You notice that the best King of Fighters, best, 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 Re- best. Re- regardless of what what, what this yeah, guy yeah. says. <laughs> Incorrect, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so they played music from that, and then they played Nakaruru's music from Sam Show. I was like Nakaru, yeah. right? And right? I was like, Mama Haha went after the yeah, letter, like, and you're like, ah, nope, nope. <laughs> but the he, best part. The be- oh, and then um, Geese, of course, Geese, Geese Howard Geese. falls That's off what? a building trying to catch this. It's so ridiculous, but the nerd in me was like, "Yes, this is amazing." Because you and I, we, you and I, recognize every song, every character, every animation. Whoever put that video together loved, loved <laughs> SNK. Like it was just a w- amazing homage of SNK characters. So when it's revealed it's Terry Bogard, I'm like, okay, he's gonna say. Okay, or hey, come on, come on, come, come on, come on. And he says, "Hey, come on." And I'm like, "Cool, I'm down." So that's all I needed. Terry Bogard. So, yeah, Where were we? Where were we? I'm sorry, I had to talk about that. So that's a, no, like, no, no, that was a great segue because as you and I've talked about, King of Fighters, King of Fighters, is the best one is ninety six. Yes, and I so, even went to a on. panel, an SNK panel, where they were unveiling the latest character for SNK heroines or whatever. 
And I asked the developers who did 94, 95, 96, 97, up to 2000 or 2001, I think. I asked them. The answer is 96, but in your opinion, what are the best King <laughs> of Fighters games? Did not. Yeah, I did. I said the answer is King of Fighters 96, but I would like you to tell me what are your favorite King of Fighters? King of Fighters 96, 97, 98. And they laughed, <laughs> and he said, actually, the best King of Fighters is King of Fighters 97. 97. <laughs> I was like, you've got to be kidding me. They don't know any better just because they made the game doesn't mean that they know. But apparently their favorite is King of Fighters 97. And the uh, limited uh, mode, no. I don't agree with it. I mean, I like uh, I, I like King of Fighters. Fatal Fury is the first King of Fighters. Little he's right. I yeah, mean, it yeah. was. That's where the King of Fighters started. I mean, we should have guessed Terry Bogart would be the guy. But when yeah, I mean, but, but you never really know, though, because, I mean, we don't – there's not <sighs> – Look at the cover of this. Who is on the cover of this? We see Iori. We see Kyo. We see Blue Mary. Blue Mary. We do not see Terry anywhere on this box. Let me. We, we we don't even. We see what's his name? Kyo's like number one fan. What, what was his name? Yeah, I got that dude's name. Oh, I uh, loved. No, it was something Joe. ridiculous. It was something silly. Something silly. Okay, wait, uh, we're taking it back. Terry, there's a small square right there. <laughs> right. So 1997 is there. No, that's, that was, that's their I know those guys made the game, but they suck. They don't know what they're talking about. No, and, you know, in limited run games. They did a, uh, they did a, they had all the King of Fighters games to pick, and they did in fact release King of Fighters '97. So maybe we're wrong, but we're not. Oh, we're absolutely wrong. We're, we're Shingo, wrong. that was it. All Shingo, people, yes. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, Sledge. Thank you, Sledge. Sledge. Shingo kick. She, oh, that guy was so stupid. That was like us if we were characters in, in a video. <laughs> we should be characters in the Omar game. Omar Punch! <laughs> All right. So well, there you go. I, so the, you got King of Fighters 97, or you just wanted to yes. pull that out? Oh, sorry. Yes, I got King of Fighters 97. Is that a limited run game? No, that is an actual cartridge. Yeah, it's an actual cartridge. It wasn't that expensive. It was pretty cheap. And All right. Really, so Whenever I go to Japan, I try and get like eight AES Neo Geo games because I don't have to worry about shipping and hand well handling getting back. But they're usually considerably cheaper just to like go to a store and go get it. So, so I'm gonna do a little retro thing of my own. I went to Knoxville and did a little uh, graphic novel hunt with the wife and kids. But in one of the stores, I found. Oh my gosh! This. Hi. Love this game. It still has the Shinmu Passport in here. Uh, this was only five bucks because it was a comic book store and it had the booklet. It's got the disc. It's one of my favorite games. It's a forklift emulator. I know, that's <laughs> from, what, it is. I know what it is. Four disc of pure awesomeness. They're all in here, man. It's probably your memories. It was literally no three disc and then the passport. It was literally me just going around uh, collecting Gashapon. That's how I played this game, as one does. I drove the forklift around. Do you know the man? Have you seen the man? In the black. Have car? you seen the man in the black car? Yeah. I know kung fu. <laughs> <laughs> so, what uh, what else did you get? Uh, one more thing from Japan. Well, actually, we'll, we'll talk about the second thing later, but. Last time I was in Japan, I really wanted to pick up a Nintendo AES system, which is like the newer re-release Nintendo system that came out here that came with the dog bone controller. But I ran out of money, ran out of time, ran out of room, ran out of luggage, et cetera, et cetera. And prices at retro gaming, collectors, let me talk to you for just a second. If there's a retro game that you want, buy it as quickly as you can because prices are constantly going up, going up. When I was in there last time, these Nintendo AVS systems were a hundred bucks, I think, and they've gone up to 160 at the same store. It's like prices are going up. So if you want something, like go get it, go get it now. And that means if you have to go to AliExpress or whatever you have to go do, go do it, go do it now. Do you think that's true for everything though? Because uh, I was, I always was curious about that, and I wanted to talk to you about that. Like. Don't they hit a certain peak? Like for example, PlayStation One. I think for the most part, most of the PlayStation One games have heard of, have hit a peak. But I say that, and then I look at pr prices of Persona, which yeah. have gone insane, yeah. right? But I mean, that's just one game. I don't know. No, no, no. I think it's one of those things where the generation that was playing and collecting these games, like they get to a certain age. So you and I, like we, oh, absolutely, yeah. I see what you're saying. NES and SNES games. So, because there's a big demand for that stuff, prices went through the roof. Like, like I have Ninja Warriors on the Super Nintendo, and 
I think I may have told you a story where I lost it, couldn't find it, was pissed off, and had to get on eBay. And I spent like 40 bucks buying it on eBay. And I was like, I can't believe this game was $40. This game isn't worth $40. Da, 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 da. Fast forward to today. Ninja Warriors on the SNES is worth like 150 bucks on eBay. I'm like, well, okay, I'm glad I got that then, but I think I think so, SNES and PlayStation One and that stage is where things are just going through the roof. Now, if we were trying to pick up Xbox 360 games or even Xbox One or Xbox regular Xbox games, that stuff is still relatively cheap. Well, I was gonna say I think a lot of it also has to do with the digital release of these games when they come to the to a store, right? Like the digital store. Yeah, like Sequoia Two, I'm sure would be worth a lot more if they hadn't released it on the PS uh, three and four digitally. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely a thing. When people like either dump games or they're available in digital stores, the demand just isn't quite as high because some people just want to play the game. Other people want to collect it. Like Earthbound is still expensive, but it was two fifty at one point. I wonder what Earthbound is right now. I'm I'm, I'm kind of curious. So anyway, so don't do, that. I, don't do that to yourself. All right, what did you get? Okay, so I made a point to try and find one of these things, an A A V S A V S Famicom. And the reason I want this is because I want to want to mod it to do RGB, and that way I could find a um I could find or send it off to be modded for RGB and still be able to play things like. Castlevania 3 or Akuma, Akuma Dracula and some other games that have the enhanced sound chips, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I found one of these. I did actually end up finding one for about a hundred bucks. This is what this is. So this has the AV port in the back. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, I see it. AV port in the back. And unlike the American version of this thing, Family computer. It does not have the RF unit in the back. It's just power in the AV. And the front it says family computer. Computer. It's nice and sleek. It plays Famicom games just fine. So what this is enables me to do is play these Famicom. So I have an original Famicom over there and some of these Japanese games and the disc system and things like that. But the only way I can play them is with RF. This is the port for your 3D glasses and your drive and things like that but i only can play the famicom that famicom with rf so it looks like hot garbage anytime i want to play a famicom game now obviously there's hdmi solutions and things like that like the avs thing that's over there what have you but like playing it in pure on a crt i didn't have a way to do that with a clean signal with this thing i can now play my japanese games and japanese disc games with a clean signal and it looks and sounds and plays perfect as it should so I wanted to pick one of those and got one of those. So that's basically what I got from Japan that I'm willing to discuss right now. Later on, when we talk about other things, uh, that'll be a different episode. Okay. Okay. So for me, I got a couple more things and that's it. Okay. Um, I wanted to get back into playing games again on my spare time. May do a little traveling for work. So I got Mega Man 11. Not the limited edition with a fucking amiibo, but that's okay. I'll get an amiibo sometime. Um, and Dragon Marked for Death. Now, there was a limited version of this uh, released only in Japan, not in America. But I just couldn't... I, I found this used, and I couldn't turn it down. Like, the price was good, and the artwork is beautiful. It says local multiplayer, but it's lying. You each have to have your own Switch for Wi-Fi download multiplayer action. Is that Lay. local I guess it kind of it literally counts. says lo like it says right here four playable characters offering different play styles and strengths play co-op multiplayer with up to four friends local or online there's a little asterisk right there additional games and systems required for multiplayer mode <laughs> well, there you go see you just still got to read but shut up <laughs> uh, and Mega Man 11 which I'm about to beat because it's Fun. It's. Have you played this? I don't know if yes. you played. I have not beat it, but I have played it. How do you not beat it? it? Like it's. It's easy. To, anyway, so very. And I got one more thing, and that's it. Am I allowed to show? Am I allowed to show the thing you got me? Or am I not allowed to show that? The thing I got you. Yeah. The thing I got you. Oh, oh, the thing I got you. I don't know if you should show that. Yeah, let's not show that. Don't show. Okay. Yeah, let's not show that. <laughs> He got me a double-headed dildo with my name on one end and his name on the other. So we can't show that, apparently. Not only should you not show it, you should not describe it either. <laughs> All right. Let it's me, that let me, big. 
Luke, <laughs> stop it. I want to stab you in the face. So, um, my brother, I'm, I have this, which, speaking of used games, I have this rule about uh, if you want to sell a game, and this you know this rule, if you want to sell games, Omar or any of our buddies, ask me first because I might want to do that. I might want to take it off your hands. You mean buy it because you buy yes. everything? You dumb bastard. Okay. Uh, I'm preserving I'm preserving a rich heritage and history of gaming. So my brother was like, hey, do you want this game for a couple of bucks? And I said, uh, yeah, I do. And that game is... Oh, yeah. The, the you're later, never, you're never yeah. going to play that. So you're, ex- you're actually correct on this one. I am never going to play this. <laughs> but it has all the discs. It's in good shape. And this is, uh, this is essentially anime Resident Evil. Anime Resident Evil. With, with the same tank controls and all that. So, like, I might actually play it, like, no, start it you're up. Ne- never start gonna it play. up. You're oh. never going to. It's used. It was used to begin with. Look yeah. at that big used sticker. Used. I hope used. you didn't pay more than $2 for that. It was not super expensive. But, you know, I want to keep these type of things in the family. So, I went ahead and picked this up. And also, my buddy Omar, I, again. Oh, yeah. There's certain games. That I, if you see them out in the wild and they're inexpensive, because like even though I'm a collector, gatherer, whatever you want to call me, I still don't like to spend too much money on games. There's like a, nah, I can't do it. Which is why I say if there's some game that you want, buy it now while it's cheap, because you're probably going to pay out the yin yang later. So I've been looking for Turtles 3, the Muppets Take Manhattan Project again, for a long time for NES, because this game is actually really fun. This is like the. I love that game. Yeah, the sequel to game. Turtles 2, the arcade game for NES, and it's similar in style, but it's a bit more variety and depth and things like that. This game is super dope. And my buddy Omar was out and about, and he found it for, like, how much did you find it for? Mm, I think the like, guy wanted 15, but I talked him down to 10. Talked him down to 10 bucks. <laughs> but I mean, he turned it on because I was like, I want to see if it works. Yeah, there's this game is for far more. Now, I mean, not like it's not worth like a hundred dollars, but it's worth more than ten dollars. And more importantly, it's a fun game. I really enjoyed this game as a kid. It's one of the things that I could kick myself for not picking up at the time when I did. But Omar saves the day. So thank you, Omar, for that. I That's the first it. time I did that. I've saved the day. Mm, mm, mm. I have um Two more things. So, so I've got I've got one, and then you can go. Okay, go Let ahead. Sh- um, so Wait, that that math doesn't work out, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go. Okay, there we go. All, All right. right. So I got collection of mana, which is the greatest thing I could have bought. Like seriously, this is the best thing I could have bought, and it brings back memories. Opened uh, it, you one-eyed bastard. Of course, I'm gonna open it. <laughs> It's just amazing. This is this is my favorite experience of any video games was playing Secret of Mana or Seiken the D- D- Densetsu 2, Densetsu 2 yes. on the Super Nintendo with my brothers. Now And I have a similar could, memory too. My brother and I played the snot out of Oh did, did you not have a third friend? No. Oh jeez, man. I'm sorry. That just, must have sucked for you just, guys to have the just, piece to what the, the, the Super Nintendo. T- <laughs> I don't. Okay, the joke. I won't let you go ahead and have the joke because the joke is funny. But we couldn't afford a multi tap, so if we had a third person to play, it wouldn't have mattered. I That's have a why. Now. So, I oh my god, this this game is everything, and the fact that they released it physically, I was like, fuck yes, I'm. I don't. I haven't bought a game in forever. That's why I don't really do these hauls. Like I show one or two games off, and then Rob shows off like a thousand games, but. I was like, I gotta get this, and I did. And I I haven't played it yet, but I think I'm gonna play it with my kids. And these are the best. The only thing I'm disappointed in is that they went with Final Fantasy Adventure, uh, which is cool, right? Because that's the very first thing that came out here to America. Yeah, it was I'm called not, Final I'm Fantasy sure. Adventure, I'm instead of the remake uh, on the Game Boy Advance, sort of Mana. I was hoping they would include that in here, because oh, okay. because it was all in color and everything. Uh, but it does have Secret of Mana, and then it has Trials of Mana. And we are getting a remake of Trials of Mana. And remember, Trials of Mana is Second Setsu 3. So this is the first release, official release, of Second Setsu 3 yes, in, absolutely. English, in English. So, so this, is, this is a big deal. So that's why I was like, I'm going to get it physical. physical. But yeah, we are, we are getting a Trials of Mana. Uh, and I... I'm st- we're still struggling through the remake of Secret of Mana. <laughs> Why don't you show? Why don't you hold up and make it full screen of the uh, reversible cover? Sure. You talking about the inside here? Yep. 
which is the cover to Secret of Mana and Look at the that. Trails of Mana. It's absolutely gorgeous. That's if you can tell. There we go. That's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I want to cut down the mana tree and make hamburgers with it. And it comes with this ridiculous little piece of paper. I don't know what that's for. But yeah, this was completely worth the proof, the, the purchase that I made for this. Yeah. Uh, so here is a couple of good things. Oh, here's a question. Rob, did you, what's your thoughts on the Polymega and did you pre-order it? We'll talk about the Polymega. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about that. And I would like a new copy of Demon Crest for the SNES. I'll keep an eye out. But... <laughs> You're in luck, because that is one of the 20 games that is going to be on the Super Nintendo tomorrow on the Switch. And it's like it's really coincidental, or maybe you saw the thing, that you're asking for Demon Crest, because like six people know what that game is. <laughs> right, it's a sequel to Gargoyle's Quest, right? And everybody, and it's so weird, because it's like Gargoyle's Quest was on the Game Boy, and he was the character that was in Ghost and Goblins, right. like he got his own game, which was an RPG game. Demon's and Crest is a little bit different, it was like a side-scroller, but it was so good. And Gargoyle's Quest on the Game Boy, I played, yes, I have it over there, and I played through it very recently. It's a uh, I used to game. have that game. It's a good game. Like so, yeah, Demon's Crest on Super Nintendo, chick. But if you have a Nintendo Switch and you have the Nintendo Switch online service, you have 20 games. Which we'll talk about here in a minute. Rob, show your last haul. Show, okay, so I'll show the last stuff. Uh, I'll run through this quick, pretty quickly because mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're getting close to the top of the hour. Uh, this is a core graphics. This is the other piece of... I mainly focus in Japan for retro stuff. I will cut you in the face. The core <laughs> graphics. I have something called, and we've talked about actually in a panel episode, is I have something called a Super System, Super SD System 3. And it allows for emulation of games on SD card and CD emulation. And the reason that really appeals to me, and I probably have told the story too, where I was trying to play East for my children. They love the music. I was like, all right, let me show you this game. Let's play it. And my CD player, my CD-ROM did not spin up. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm screwed. It's done. It's never going to work again. And literally 30 minutes later, I will walk into the living room where I just let it because it was trying to spin and go, eh, eh, eh. It finally spun up and started the game. So I guess the capacitors had to get heated up. I don't know, whatever. So that freaked me the fudge out. So I needed to find a solution. And I also have a Japanese Turbo Duo, and it does exactly the same thing. If I want to play a game, because I found like an arcade card for really super cheap over there in Japan. I'm like, all right, I'm going to play Strider and World Heroes now they have an official arcade card. It takes minutes for anything to load just because the, the CD-ROM's busted. So with the core graphics, which fits very nicely, it fits better than my Super Graphics. I can put the Super SD card in, and then I have access to all my games that I've ripped or what have you. So that, that was the last thing that I pulled from Japan. And... I wanted to talk about... I'm a big fan of this game. This is the last thing, right? Okay. I, I don't know. I, I know you got one thing that I wanted, because I didn't. I wasn't able to get it. Now I gotta go through eBay to get it. And it's a limited edition of The Three Houses. You mean Three Fire Ninja, Emblem. Three Ninjas Kit Back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire yeah. Emblem, fool. Look, you, you got so many games stacked up beside you, you don't even remember. <laughs> so, so... This is Fire Emblem Three Houses. Three Houses. Season of Warfare Edition. Now, go ahead. Here's the beautiful art. Ask me if I'm going to open this. No, I'm not going to. However, I have played the game because I got it. Did I preloaded it digitally and forgot, and then I got the big, big thing. So, Omar, I'll sell this to you for $500 because you're my homie, and I love you very much. Fire Emblem's a great game. It's a lot of freaking you can fun. You can take that off the Nino Cooney that you owe me. But go ahead. I got what, you, Nino Cooney. You got me a fucking German version. Anyway, what else did you get? <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about. Last thing I want to talk about. I'm a big fan of a game. I've talked about it many times. I'm going to say it again. The Messenger. So the Messenger finally got a physical release from Limited Run Games, and they also got a physical release from Special Reserve, which is the version that I have here. So this is the Special Reserve release. Ooh, that's nice. How much is that? This was sixty dollars. I think. God. You're not gonna open that. Oh, it's fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. Oh, that makes me feel so much yeah. better. Uh, moderately, something like that. So yeah, this is cool art. And again, if you play this game, like, are they out? Are, are they out of stock on that already? Special reserves games, probably. But you can still get a. Can you get a physical copy of this game? 
I don't know. I don't know. Because it was a limited run thing, but it wasn't limited run directly. It was special reserve games via limited run. So you might still be able to get one of these. I'm not sure. Don't hold me to that. But this edition, I think, is gone. But this edition, and I actually am going to open this. Watch me open this. Watch me. Look, look, look at look. Wow. Who says I don't open games? Right I here, do. baby. Right here. So inside we have... Oh. I could I could have just showed you a picture I found online. Of you know what's what? on the inside. Gone it. Why don't you do that? Here's the game. Oh, you got it on the PS4. You're so poor. You didn't get the Switch version. <laughs> I got a different physical copy of the Switch version. Shut up. So this is special reserve copy is numbered 972, not for resale. So that's cool. And not for resale. Yeah, somebody needs to tell the right. cats on eBay. Yeah, let's see how that works out. And it includes this special reserve. Instruction. Oh, manual. nice. Yeah, so, this instruction manual is. I actually haven't opened this up. I mean, I haven't looked. I don't know what's in it. So, there's a nothing. And thank you. You just made the perfect choice purchase. So, y'all should support specialreservegames.com. Let's where you go that. Here's the introduction to the game. Here is how to get started. Oh, cool. Well, this is beautiful scenes from the game. Have you had a chance to play this game? No, give me this, that copy. Yeah, so this is not, not going to happen. Ninja Gaiden-esque cross with Metroidvania. Have you played it yet? Cross. Oh, you played the snot out of it. 8 and 16-bit. Oh, 8 and 16-bit. Like, you start out in an 8-bit Ninja Gaiden type game, and it's pretty straightforward. And then stuff happens, and you go to the future. And when you do that, make sure there's lights so you can see. When you do that, it turns into a 16-bit graphics and 16-bit music style game, very much like a, nin, um, a Metroidvania rather than a straight-up Ninja Gaiden action game. It is fantastic. And those guys that sabotage games, they're just really cool guys. I got a chance to hang out with them. and That's how you got your copy. No, actually, actually, no, I did not get my copy from those guys. You got those uh, guys drunk and they were like, hey, man. You want this? You're like, yeah, sure. I'll so, take that. Uh, here's a message from the developer. Carried by warm memories of playing video games as children in the 90s, we at Sabotage seek to craft experiences that feel retro in their aesthetics while being definitely modern in their design, gameplay, and storytelling. Et cetera, et cetera. We hope you enjoy the game. As players experience wonder, escapism, and a sense of accomplishment. Thank you for supporting us. Again, cool guys, cool guys, Terry and Martin. So that is it for me. All oh, right. Oh, oh, one more thing that I'm just going to show and not explain what it is because that's how mysterious I am. The next haul that we do, I will probably talk about this in a bit more. But I'm just going to show what this is. Some 18 year old kid that uh, walked up to your door and was like, "Hey, you're my dad." I'm like, "Wait, what? Maybe?" So, do you know what, what this the is? hell is that? Uh, it's a motherboard, some a chips. Mo uh, looks like some kind of reader for okay, video game card. Video game card. This is. Oh, let's see. I need to. I know. I didn't know that. That's neat. This is called a super gun. A super gun. What is a? Go ahead and ask the question. I don't care. I'm just kidding. What's a super <laughs> gun? What's a super gun? Uh, this is why we're such good friends. Because you're such a jerk. Um, <laughs> so a super gun basically allows you to take any arcade game that supports the standard JAMA connection. Connection. That's what this is. These, mm -hmm. these, uh, these are audio, video, and controls. That's what these pins all are. So I can take any arcade game, plug it into this, the actual big giant motherboard. This is power. Let's just write this. Power, video, audio out. The two controllers and various switches for like RGB and things like that. Okay, and kick. So my kick buttons work in Street Fighter games. So I can take one of these plug it into my TV and my controls into this and play any arcade game. So let's say I had, and I do not because so Sledge not. knows. Yeah, Sledge so knows arcade on the board. That's exactly right. So let's say I go to my local arcade and I open up the one of the machines and I take Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the back of it. I could take that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles board, plug it into this thing, which is plugged into my equipment, and play actual Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game. Is this how they got ROMs? Like how they would rip ROMs then? Uh, no, but the process would be they would take the actual board, mm -hmm. desolder, or take off each chip. Because if you see an arcade board, which I don't have one handy here that I can show you, there's one inside here. Oh, there's one inside of everything that you play. There's always ROM chips on these things. Except digital. 
yeah. So if except that's why we don't get digital. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so you, they take each of these ROMs and they can literally read every, all the contents of the ROM, and that's how, like, when you have a Neo Geo ROM, for example, and you see the things are called U three B four six D. That's because that's uh. the location. Of ROM chip on the board itself. So it corresponds to real ROM. So you could dump one of these things and then get like a, ch- a ROM a chip burner and boot- that's where bootleg came from. That's why you see like bootleg Neo Geo games all over the place because that's what they did. They would take a real one, dump the ROMs, and then upload them and burn them and put them on a thing. It works. So that's not what this is for. That's not what this is for. This is for to actually play that hardware at home at home on my tv using my controllers that is badass how much yeah. was that this thing was a it was actually pretty cheap there's so many different versions and like i said we're going to do an episode we did an episode recently a panel on the arcade at home so yeah. i like to well, we didn't, you didn't mention anything illegal because i would have brought that up <laughs> world exclusive <laughs> yeah let me tell you guys about uh, emulators and roms <laughs> the next you may have you may have heard of them 25 years ago. <laughs> Correct. So, <laughs> in an upcoming episode, of upcoming panel episode, since everyone seemed to have enjoyed the arcade at home, I'm going to talk more about other options for doing arcades at home, and I'm going to talk about the Super Gun and actual arcade game board, so, and some emulation solutions, arcade one-ups with pies in them, and Pandora's boxes, and other things like that. We're going to talk about all that stuff later, but but I was really excited to get this thing. And now I need to find like arcade boards. And unfortunately, like if you go to eBay and type in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade PCB, it's $400 versus I can just buy the one up arcade thing for $350 or I could just download the ROM for free. So, mm. yeah, like I'm pretty uh, hard. I'm, I am hardcore about my gaming. Obviously, you're not. But I am not $400 to play TMNT. <laughs> or am I? All right. So. Let's talk about some things here in the chat. Like uh, some people have been bringing up some things on the. We'll talk about the Poly Mega, which I'm excited for. I think you're indifferent, but that's because you're wrong 90% of the time about these things. Mm-hmm. Let me find one of the things here. Okay, uh, well, you're looking, I'll talk about oh, here it is. Oh. What games are you? What's um? What games are on your wish list for the SNES on the Switch now? Uh, so Dave Cave wants Super Punch Out. For sure. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they've announced 20 games starting tomorrow. And if you don't know what it is, I'm sure most of you all know. Nintendo Online, you have to purchase it. I think my brother bought it and shares it with eight of us. So thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Uh, and I think it's, what is it, like $20 a year, $25 a year? If you are, if I don't know. How much is a banana? $5, $10? $10? I don't know how much a banana is. <laughs> but chicken, let's go to do the chicken dance. <laughs> all right, go ahead. What? Uh, so, um, if it is a single person, it's nineteen ninety nine a year. If it's a family, which is up to eight people, it's thirty four dollars a year, and that's a freaking steal. A is instead of paying sixty bucks like you do for Xbox and PlayStation, you pay thirty four dollars. It can accommodate up to eight people. So then them people. Japanese motherfuckers underestimated how cheap Americans are. Yeah, they don't understand. They don't understand. <laughs> or how many, how many, how many cousins Latinos have. <laughs> So, and the other cool thing that you get is you get certain games for free. And one of these, there's one, you can get a Tetris 99 game, which is fantastic. That's Tetris a lot 99. of fun. Uh, you get something called the NES version of this, where it's all these Nintendo games. And again, they add three or four games every month. And the Nintendo games, including like, you know, Mario, Zelda, Donkey Kong, they include some pretty cool stuff. For the SNES, so tomorrow we'll be able to add SNES games. And um, the, some, some of these games are things like Mario Kart. Yoshi's Island, F Zero, Link to the Past, Mario World, Star Fox. Yes, I'm totally reading a list. Stunt Race FX, which is the first time that's been on anything, which is kind of cool. Super Metroid, which is the best Super Nintendo game. The rest can go. Brawl Brothers, which is pretty unique. Joe and Mac that. Two. Two. I love Joe and Mac. <laughs> in Tropics. Caveman what? Ninja. No, I, 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 I'm not going to give that game too much grief because my brother and I played the snot out of the original Joe and Mac back in the day. Like, yeah, yeah, we totally did that. that oh, that's it was great, man. Yeah. EDF. EDF. Super EDF Force. Puyo Puyo 2. Breath of Fire and Super Ghouls and Ghosts. And Breath of Fire. Way to go, Capcom. Yeah. So, like, that's this is actually a pretty daggone decent selection. So things that I'm surprised I don't see are things like Donkey Kong. Like how, but maybe that's a rare thing. Maybe that's a licensing thing. But then again, it's on the SNES Classics. So maybe I want to see more RPGs. I want to see Chrono Trigger because everyone who got an SNES Classic, the first thing they did. But, they, but don't you think that's it. gonna? Don't, don't you think uh, what's going on, Geo, from a weekend geekdom? What's up, bro? 
so don't you think that's going to cut into the digital downloads of things like that? Because I'm sure Square wants people to buy Chrono Trigger on the Switch when it's available, right? Um, yeah. Uh, you know it's true. Of course, of course they do. But so at the why same... would they want people to rent it? <laughs> like, it, 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 I'm just it, saying, if if coming from a business perspective, if I were Square, I'd be like, fuck no, you're not gonna get that. You're gonna get like, what's what's a shitty SquareSoft game? Uh, Air Gates. I don't know. <laughs> Definitely, that's on the PlayStation. <laughs> I don't think Square had any shitty Super Nintendo titles because they were all pretty much gold when they came over here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like they wouldn't. There's no reason for them to do that when they can just have their own digital store and, and sell it. True. Sell or Chrono like Trigger for Mana. ten or twenty dollars, or yeah. Omar's dumbass the collection of Mana, which he owns just about every version of except my original because I sold it. God, God bless. God, mm. that was a hard day, but. Mm. Okay, so let's see. Christopher Bond is saying yeah. Doom 64 is going to be on the Switch? Switch. Isn't that great? I've been trying to find... So this is where uh, me being a game gatherer slash collector, I've been looking for a copy of Doom 64 for a long time for not that much money. And one time I saw it for, I think, 20 bucks. I was like, oh, 20 bucks is so much money. And I haven't seen it since. So if anyone, if you ever see Doom 64 Omar, mm. go ahead and pick it up as long as it's not too expensive. Like I'll try. The, yeah, I'll yeah. try to remember that. I think I'll it's in a red that. case. So now that this game is av- available digitally, there's a possibility that it'll go down in price. Maybe. Mm, we'll maybe. See. But maybe. Rob seems to think that they stay up. Uh, that was ten minutes ago, Rob. Before I brought up that, but that's okay. Rob, let's do this. Five games, Super Nintendo wish list. You go, I go. You go, I go. Obviously, I can't mention this, even though I would. <laughs> this is totally totally so count. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go first. Final Fantasy three. I was gonna say Final Fantasy three, you jerk. I don't care. I took it, so your turn. <laughs> Go ahead okay. with your super smart ball. <laughs> That's a good game. Um, I already said Chrono Trigger, so I'm gonna say it again. Chrono Trigger. You're wrong. Never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. You think Final Fantasy three will be? Oh, nah, nah, I'm just wishful thinking, man. All right, go ahead. All right, all right so that's one and one for us. Super Mario Brothers RPG. So, well, that's pretty good. Axley. Act Racer. Mega Man X3. Mm, oh, oh, you went with X. <laughs> Mega Man Soccer. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, and okay. I got I got my last one. Don't you okay, take okay, it? Okay, okay, Wait, okay, that, okay. What did okay. I say? Final Fantasy three. Mega Man Soccer. Actors are, oh, I got two more. You got two more. Okay, come on. And more? we'd love to know in the chat. Let us know what you want on the on the Super Nintendo. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. What do you got? Okay. You said Mega Man Soccer. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Mega Man Seven. Damn it! You that's three Mega Man games. You you don't know how to. There we go. That's seven. <laughs> Paladin's Quest. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I love that game, but nobody else does. Super Bomberman 2. That's a good one. That's, that's it, man. That's the breadwinner right there. That's, that's the one. one. All right, I got one more. You got what? I think two I got more. one more. Two no, more. you got two more. I went first. Two more, two more. Um, Lufia 2. Ooh, ooh, Lufia 1 was better, though. Lufia mm. one was Lufia one was better. Mm. Mm. I'm about to kick you off the shelf. You could vote in Lufia two instead of one. <laughs> oh man, what is a good? We they already got Super Mario Brothers. They got Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, all the Nintendo stuff I think is accounted for. I'm sure. Like the second we get off the air, Super like Metroid is there. Yeah, I'm gonna look walk back into the Super Nintendo room and be like, oh my god, why didn't we say this? So I'm sure that's there. Mm-hmm. I'm looking around for inspiration. All right. I haven't looked at the chat yet, but yeah, let us know in the chat what you want on the Super Nintendo thing. Oh, oh, Sledge. Sledge wins. The Legend of Mystical Ninja. Yeah. What's this Goemon stuff? <laughs> we I'm use running. American names here in America. See, I was thinking of a fighting game, so I'm going to go with Tournament of, Tournament of Fighters, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Like right? One. Wasn't available anywhere else. The Genesis had a different version. The Nintendo had a different version. All right, All right, last I one, Rob. What do you got? What do you ready? got? Mm-hmm. A localized version of Dragon Quest VI. Ooh, good choice. Good choice. You win. You win. No, I win with Super nope. Bomberman 2. Because <laughs> <laughs> you could take four player controller and make it, oh, man, it'd be great. Yeah, great. It great. would be great. Yeah, also, I'm going up with, like, Gradius 3, but actually it's a better game than Gradius 3. Final Fight uh, 3, that's a oh, good Oh, shit, that's a good that's one, a too. Choice. I saw that. No, maybe no, it wasn't 3. I saw Final Fight 2. For really cheap in Japan, but I didn't pick it up. 
because it's in Japanese. It's a fighting game. Punch in face. Rush, Rush. Rondo. I don't oh, what know. about Castlevania Four though? Cas- I thought Castlevania Four was perfect. It, it, yeah, that, that that almost assuredly showed up, and that's one of Super my favorite Nintendo games. 4. So, and Rondo of Blood, I did not like as much on the Super Nintendo. But, I mean, what what if perfect. what if you were poor and only knew that there was a Super Nintendo version? You didn't know about the. What and was I would the, tell you to go buy the PC Turbo Engine Graf- CD, the Turbo Graphics Mini for ninety nine dollars. It has forty two games. Po- that's the answer. Pocky. No, not just Pocky Rocket. Pocky Rocket, Pocky Rocket two. two. Pocky yes. Rocket two. Dude, that's have, the did you ever play the the Game Boy Advance one where it was like Pocky and Rocky and Becky? I feel like that was the American like uh, the the guy that the CEO that brought it over here. Going Natsume, I guess had the rights yeah, at the time. Natsume. He's like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a, I got a brand new granddaughter. Her name's Becky. Throw that bitch in the game. Pocky so, and Rocky. They didn't even bother changing it to Pocky, comma Rocky and Becky. It was Pocky and Rocky. And then with like a damn Kroger <laughs> sticker <laughs> or one of those home labels. And Becky. And Becky, yay! So I met the CEO of Nesumi Atari, and he's showing oh, shit. all of his games. Like you know, these are the games that we made. And he gets to Pocky and Rocky, which is called something different. In Japan, I was like, "Oh, that's Pocky and Rocky. I have that on." Yeah, yeah, it was called something different. And he was like, "How do you know about Pocky and Rocky?" It's like, "I'm a bad motherfucker. That's all I know about Pocky and Rocky." I'm a big fucking nerd (laughs) that didn't get laid until I was in my mid (laughs) twenties. Later than that. (laughs) So I still have three children. I still haven't gotten laid. All right, all right. Holly, there was a question over here. Uh, Let me go back up for Rob. Rob, what are your thoughts? On the Poly Mega, what's up, Silver Comics? What's up, Silver Comics? Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this live chat. We really appreciate you for real. We really do appreciate you guys. Much love to all of you. All right, but Rob, the question is, what are your, what is your problem with the Poly Mega? Okay, so I guess I shouldn't say I have a problem with Poly Mega. I have a problem with the pers- how the whole story came about. But I've come around a little bit. Initially, the Poly Mega was going to be an FPGA solution. That's a um, a the same processor that emulates hardware versus just straight up using an emulator so the results are better so when you talk about the analog so like the mega sg and the super nt and the nt the mr cores those things that are hardware timing perfect and that's originally what this was advertised to be then they're like eh, that's hard it takes a lot of math and i'm not i'm not minimalizing what they're talking about like it is hard it does take a lot of math and money to do it correctly from the amount of things that they're talking about so they started using a they called it a hybrid approach i don't think it's hybrid anymore i think it's just straight up emulation but they okay. got the dudes who did uh let's see what is it the Majin Majin 64 emulator and some other like actual authors of emulators to go in and work on these cores Majin, you're talking about the fighting emulator Mo- no, yes mugen Mugen 64? Mugen 64. Okay. That's one of the emulators that they're using. They're using a couple others. So mm-hmm. they got those guys and brought them in, and like they're working on the emulators themselves. So for me, the biggest thing is Saturn emulation. I've oh, God. The story about the it's impossible. Dying, and I've told the story about my ter- duo dying, and the Saturn is next. And as you know, every time we have video game Armageddon, we play like Super Bomberman, Super Bomberman, Saturn. Super Street, Street Fighter 2, Alpha 2, like all these Saturn games, Marvel's, Marvel's Super Which Marvel's is the best. Guardian Heroes, like, you know, we play yeah. a ton of these games. So I'm really looking forward to a solution that plays this thing accurately. And they've shown off the Polymega hardware, taking the disc, sucking it in, ripping it as it's playing, and then you don't need to disc anymore, which I'm so, like, yes, please give this to me, because I have, like, you know, whatever Saturn game, I would love to just be able to put in this disc and be done with it. Radiant I, Sun, I, don't I, like, I love that convenience factor, yeah, right? Because exactly. I don't want to be logging around all my discs. Exactly, now, exactly. Two, so, two, so, two questions, though. Yeah. Does it play backups? Because I no longer have my Panzer Dragoon saga that was long gone because of my buddy Matt sold it. That, that you need to punch my <clears throat> vagina. Um, I don't know. Like I listened to a long podcast about the dude talking about this, and I was listening for because he said you put in a disc, it rips it, it keeps it, put it back. He never specifically said that there is security implemented. However, the fact that this thing can do this and Sega is not suing their pants off makes me think there probably is some sort of security. So I don't know if backups, like I know for a fact that you can't like copy an ISO. I know you can't do that. So he specifically said that. So maybe he made a backup. Maybe it plays. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I'm just going to have to borrow your copy of Panzer Dragon Saga. Dragon Saga. Yeah, I have it somewhere. I think. Yeah, laying around on the floor somewhere. Asshole. Stepping on it. So, so 
my thoughts on poly mega have changed. The last time I was asked, I was like, eh, but after I've listened to the dude talk, and again, like this is an hour long podcast of this guy talk about this thing, and seeing watching videos of it, I'm like, okay. It, once I see it in real life, in action, and actually see it play games and see how well it plays games, like if it plays Radiant Silver Gun perfectly, it might be worth the price of admission for me right then and there. But it is expensive, I think, by itself with no cores, but no cores means that it still plays. I think it plays Saturn, Sega CD, mm-hmm. Turbo, Duo, Neo Geo CD, which I have a Neo Geo CD. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anything could read faster than that thing does. And what's the fifth one? Maybe PlayStation? PlayStation. Mm-hmm. PlayStation 1. So even though it's expensive, that's still five systems, CD based systems. And we don't have a solution for those things otherwise. So that's a no. pretty big freaking deal i and mean my modules for like the other cartridge based systems but five things in one for i think it's 299 349 something like that it was a kick was it a kickstarter um no i, I, I can't remember where so my, my buddy kyle was all about it he's the one that you know showed me videos and i'm like i'm in man it looks amazing so silver comics is new to gaming so we could call him normie what's up normie <laughs> Go buy what, what Castlevania copy. game would you like to show up on the SNES? Castlevania Super 4. Castlevania Four. I think that's the that's the answer. Not only is it a great game, it's one of the best Castlevanias. Can we get more retro? Can we get more retro gaming stream chart? Yeah. We should. We should. Uh, Gio, Just you show only- me how to do that because I don't know what the hell we're talking about. I don't know what charts are. Chats, stream chat. Oh, stream chats. Yeah, you mean this? What, what I, I read do? charts. I can't read. Just talk about retro game the whole time. We could do that. Yeah, yeah, we got it. I What's mean, that's what this conversation was. was. How much What's... more retro game Silver Comics is this thing right here? Super Mario Brothers. Actually, that's not what it was called in Japan. Actually, it was called Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> that might have been borderline racist. Uh, what's your thoughts about Horizon Zero Dawn? PlayStation or PC? Horizon Zero Dawn on PC? Did I miss? Oh, yeah, they did talk about that, didn't they? Is that a thing? I don't know. I haven't, I dude. I'm so thing. far behind on these things. I think that is a thing. So, my, you know, I'm always going to say he said no. <laughs> I'm always, he yeah. said no. It's not a thing. No, I think I'm just rereading. Well, hold on, hold on, think, hold on. So, Horizon Zero Dawn, like, it's something you should absolutely, positively play. And they they announced it's being repackaged with a bunch of all the DLC. No, that's no, I no, I know what it is. How we were talking about this. We we're talking about it on a recent episode, an upcoming episode of Near Mint Condition. That's what I'm thinking of. So yeah. you'll get your answer about Horizon Zero Dawn soon. And I'm sorry I lost It's a beautiful joke. game. Oh, I've seen yeah, Maddie's played it. She loves it. Street Fighter versus X-Men. Actually. On the Sega Saturn. Actually. It's one of the best. Actually. That would be X-Men versus fucking, Street Fighter. Shut up, you fucking nerd. <laughs> X-Men versus Street Fighter. But hey, hey, you know, Horizon Dawn's coming on PC, so what do I know? <laughs> Silver Near me condition, where you come and get all your answers. <laughs> you know, your okay. answers questioned. <laughs> was it X Men versus Street? This is X Men versus X-Men Street. X-Men. You're right. It was. I, I remember the. But it, then it was Capcom versus Street Fighter. No, wasn't it? No, you're thinking of Capcom versus SNK. God damn it! <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah. Capcom versus Marvel. Marvel no. versus Capcom. Marvel, you're right. Marvel versus Capcom. This is Marvel superheroes versus. Ca- yeah, you're right. Marvel's That's how I remember. Yeah, That's how I remember. Screaming in your face. Hey, it's Marvel. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I am new to gaming. Should I buy a PlayStation yes. or PC? Some yep. people talk about PC. Some say PS4. Um, I think most people will probably say PC, right? Yep. Because yep. you can do so much more. Uh, most people, I say most people, right? And here's Christopher Band- Banda, and I'm sure he speaks for probably half of the community out there. Um, I mean, so Chris, when you when you talk to old people like Robin, not old, <laughs> bitch, we're in our forties. So we grew up with controllers and handhelds instead of keyboards and mice. So I, I, I I'm always going to say console. I even though I'm sure PC gaming is far superior, far superior. Well, so, like, if, for example, there's a game called Control that just came out. We'll talk about that next month. And it is by Remedy. It's the same people who did uh, Quantum Break, which I know you're familiar with. Mm-hmm. And this game is fantastic. But it runs it runs pretty good on Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 Pro. It runs like garbage on the PlayStation 1 and Xbox S, 1S. But it the runs PlayStation like... PlayStation 1? I mean, sorry. PlayStation, PlayStation- 4. S? PlayStation, okay. like the stock, the base PlayStation 4. 
Gotcha. In the stock Xbox One. Runs like garbage on both of those. Runs tolerable, pretty good on the Pro and the X version of the Xbox. But on the PC, it's a revelation. It's a revelation in gaming. It's gorgeous. It uses RTX streaming for 60 frames a second. It's fantastic. But the difference is a PlayStation Pro is $349. A PC, just the graphics card that can play control with RTX is $500. Well, Four hundred dollars all by itself. That's before you account for your processor, your hard disk, your RAM, your power supply, your case, and all that type of stuff, right? So, of course, PC gaming is going to be superior. Like Dragon Quest Eleven is on PC, and it has this widescreen, sixty frames per second mode, which is great. But in order to get all that, again, you have to have you're going to pay to get that. So for me, and that's the one you're going to pay. And two, you're never going to get things like. Red Dead Redemption. Well, Red Dead Redemption actually could totally. What are you talking out. about? That, that, that's a it's, PC game. No, Red Dead Redemption is you're not. You're never PC. gonna get. You're never gonna get. Well, I used a, to be able to say. This used to be really it. hard. It used it's, to be easy. To be you're never gonna see Final Fantasy on a <laughs> PC. Yeah, you do now because all the game development stuff they use like Unreal Engine and things like that. And it's easier to port. It's much easier. Oh, to port. Absolutely. So, so like you're not gonna get like. The Last of Us or Spider Man or Nintendo games. Oh, no, Spider Man is coming out on the PC though. Maybe that's uh, what Sony, I was Sony's too. bringing it to the PC. Look, Maybe, all right, there it is. Sony's that, bringing yes, Spider Man to the PC. It, was. it wasn't Horizon. It was Spider Man coming to PC. That's what it was. Thanks, Silver Comics. Uh, uh, there's hope for me he's, yet. He <laughs> is new to com- he's, he's new, new to gaming, gaming. <laughs> and he already out. he already schooled you. Okay, help me out. Help me out, bro. So PCX might have issues running that will never come out on PC, but there's fewer and fewer games. Like, The Last of Us probably is not going to come out on that. But not now, some... but I'm sure in about a year or two, they'll have The Last of Us collection. I, I, Anything yeah. you can get on the Xbox will eventually come out on the Xbox and PlayStation system. will come out on PC. Now, Nintendo games will never... Nintendo games, you will never play Mario Odyssey. You'll never play... Shit. Breath of Man, you'll that's never... why they got fucking emulators. <laughs> you'll never play this legit on PC. Oh, but... legit. Uh, okay. I didn't know what we were oh, talking about. There legit. you go. If you have the you've had the ducats to spend, and there is legitimacy to a Steam sale, like you can build up a Steam library very quickly. And like some of my favorite games that I played last year, other than uh, Red Dead Redemption, like Monster Hunter and all these are on PC. Dragon Quest is on PC. Like you could totally, absolutely have a fantastic gaming experience if you want to build that PC. Robs, what are your thoughts on GameStop? You guys should check out our Father and Son. It's an Android game. Rob, you have an Android. You should check it out. I do. A pixel. Pixel. Look, look, look at the branding. Human condition. Uh, which of those going to retro stores? I kind of hope they're releasing. Yeah, don't you wish? Start re release clothes of Pleat Box. Yeah, I, w- I wish they, uh, Poly Mega had done the same thing as well. GameStop's becoming a retro store. I don't know. The GameStop had a big giant sale over Labor Day weekend where they're like, buy one retro game, get a second, like 50% off. And it was stuff like Dreamcast games and PlayStation games. And like, they had some pretty decent deals but they also have some things that were way the fudge over price like i think i saw mars matrix on the dreamcast it was like a hundred dollars which granted mars it's a, matrix, it's a shooter right a, on the yeah. on the on the dreamcast so it's yeah, going to be expensive it's an expensive game but is it worth 109 dollars mars matrix let's so see some people it is yeah you know, i mean i'm not saying it's not but i'm saying you know gamestop because they can, I see them gouging some of these. Oh my gosh! Yeah, maybe I should have bought that because this looks like it's two hundred seventy nine dollars. All right, everyone, go buy Mars Matrix on the Dreamcast for one hundred nine dollars and sell on eBay for twice as much. <laughs> Scott Nine wishes Ultimate Alliance Three was on the PC right now. Isn't it exclusive to the Switch? Ultimate, yes, that is that's okay. There's a game that will never come out on well. Oh, okay, don't say that. that. Don't say that. It. It's, it's coming. It. It's right coming. now, it's like next summer. So I don't know. This might be the best comment we had. I had a pixel. It suffered a tragic boat ex- boating accident along with my ex wife. Wow, <laughs> that, that's 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 really something there. So Scott Nine loves both console and PC, but he's primarily PC. He just wants both to be great, which is fun. That's that's good. Yeah. Uh, I'm a I'm a casual gamer, so I'll just uh, a, a controllers all I need. And that's why I love the Switch because I can take it with me. So right now is a good time to remind you all to smash that like button, please. Like, subscribe, share, smash that notification icon so you get alerts the second new content drops. We are also on Patreon if you enjoy the content of this channel and want to support us that way. And what else, Rob? And remember, 
gamers who play together stay together. That's our sign off. Okay. So love one another and keep on gaming. Thank you everybody for joining us. We will love to do this again more often. Actually, Rob and I have a couple of ideas we've been throwing at each other that we just need to get together and film. I'm the comic book guy. Rob's the video game dude. But you combine, we are one big fucking nerd. It's what we are. <laughs> so everybody have a good night. Thank you for joining us. And if you're watching this later on, leave those comments down below as to what Super Nintendo game you want to see on there. And yes, I am waiting as well, Scott Nine. Maybe. Mm. With that TV show. Maybe. Just saying. Oh God, wait, wait, wait. I gotta answer this. Uh best. <laughs> What's your <laughs> the correct answer? Okay. You didn't let me answer. Berserk on the Dreamcast. Final answer. Final answer. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> Have a great night. Peace. <laughs> Dragon's Dogma. I love that game.